Kwesi, but that's how it goes. Uh, new Vikings general manager Kwesi Dofa Mensa met with the local media jackals on, uh, what day is it today? Tuesday. Nailed it. Uh, Talked to the local media jackals uh, about the draft process leading up on Thursday, his first NFL draft in charge of the Minnesota Fighting Vikings. Uh, and we got some good answers. We got some good questions, some good answers, so let's dive on in. Uh, Kramer, Star Tribune, go. Ahead of his first draft as Vikings GM, Kwesi Dofa Mensa went on a West Coast scouting trip with school visits and gained an appreciation. Uh, it just hits you how hard that job is. Unbelievably difficult. Having that experience helps me be there, lead them, uh, in this way now. So I like that he's getting down and dirty in the trenches. Uh, and even though uh, he, as a new GM, he was hired late in the scouting process. So, uh, you know, he's attending pro days and whatnot. And as opposed to attending games like Rick Spielman was doing in the fall for the Vikings. And that's the job of a GM. Because the offseason is the meat and potatoes, where you have the free agency, you have the draft, and then during the season, yes, you're always constantly looking to improve the roster in season. That's why you have a pro personnel department, so you do make some moves there, and also there's a trade deadline. But your main job is getting ready for the next draft, and that's why GMs during the season, they're on the road. Uh, they're hitting things up. And Kwesi, you know, not coming from a traditional scouting background, uh, he didn't go through uh, all those uh, all those hoops uh, of uh, being an area scout and then you're going to games so whether it's big big schools small schools whatever uh, filing reports and getting all, all up in there since he came in from the R&D side uh, so it's good to see him really dipping his toe uh, into uh, that side of the job. Uh, then uh, Kramer continued, Adolfo Mensa opened with gratitude for personnel department uh, coaching staff Yeah, personnel department is like hey get us through this draft and then everyone's fired uh, probably not. I, I think the Vikings have a fantastic scouting department and personnel department. So uh, hopefully that Kwesi is going to keep a lot of that talent in-house. Uh, noted moment in draft scenario meeting when wide receiver coach Keenan McCardle made impassioned plea for non-wide receiver. Everybody felt the moment. You talk about selflessness and the team. He showed everybody what it was about. And McCardle, I, I think that... You know, obviously being a great player in the league as well as a very solid coach. And there's a reason why players like Jefferson and KJ and Thielen were campaigned to keep McCardle. And he's one of the very few holdovers. Actually, I think he's the only position coach holdover from the previous regime. Uh, and, and that's rare. I mean, Kevin O'Connell, his prerogative could have um, washed everyone out, brought in his guys, but they kept Keenan McCardle. And I, I think it's because McCardle does have the guys back. And the Vikings do have a talented wide receiver room, but BPA is BPA. And if the best player available at 12 or if the Vikings trade back is a wide receiver, whether it's Jamison Williams, whether it's Drake London, whether it's Traylon Burks, whatever, I mean, you can't shy away from that. But uh, I do respect sort of the selflessness, even though it's a double-edged sword, like Keenan McCardle, you know, backing up the guys that he currently has on the roster, as well as, oh, no, 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 don't you, don't use draft pick on, on me. It's been on another position. So, I mean, part of it is, you know, self-preservation with his own guys in the in current wide receiver room. But there you go. Uh, next up. Because, oh, oh, it's also interesting, too, because you think that every position coach would be like, hey, draft my guy. You know, draft a guy for my position high up in that draft. So it's interesting, the selflessness. Uh, Kramer continued. Do the Vikings want to trade back? Adolfo Mensa. There's somebody sitting in the building right now who thinks player X will be the next great player. That person might want to trade up for that player. We'll find out uh, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'll be ready uh, for it when it does. And. I don't know. Is player X Derek Stingley Jr.? Uh, is the person in that building Durante Jones? I don't know. We'll see. I think at this point, if the Vikings do want to get into the Durante Jones or Sauce Gardner business, they're going to have to trade up. Um, so, yeah, again, we'll see. Uh, asked about perceived lack of top-end talent in this draft class at Ophim Mensa's sidestep, but said uh, they're treating... Uh, they're trying to meet a historical benchmark for the value of where they select, which is currently at number 12. Said every GM is involved uh, when feeling uh, out trades with pick 12. And you know, we've seen sort of behind the curtain uh, with Spielman there where, uh, what was it, the Panthers, uh, when they took J.C. Horn, I was like, oh, the Vikings want to trade up, da 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 da, da. Uh, If you're a GM, and if you're not calling every single pick that is ahead of you and behind you uh, about interest of either moving up or moving down, you're not doing your job. Because... If a team is desperate to move up enough, that's where you have your leverage. That's where you can do things. Or if there's a player that you cannot live without, and if there, there's been talk of you know, some some of these players only have, you know, some of these teams only have 15 first round grades on players. And if you want to get yourself one of those guys, you may have to maneuver, especially specifically if you want your guy. So uh, you know, we'll see. And then 
Will Raggett, Sports Illustrated. Uh, Quasi, I think volume of draft picks matters, but uh, with whatever chart people are using, there's no amount of seventh round picks that can equate to the value of that first round pick. Ah, ah. so I, I'm sure that's a little bit of uh, th- that's a little jab at Rick Spielman. Back in the day, loved him some seventh round picks, but I, I sort of understood Spielman's obsession with seventh round picks because. Instead of um, you know, getting into priority UDFAs and, and trying to win a bidding war where it's basically like free agency, you can get the rights to a player by acquiring seventh-round picks. Sure, you trade down the fifth or the fourth, and then you get a bunch of these seventh-round picks. But having the rights right away as opposed to just hoping to win um, uh, win them in free agency, is, yeah, I, I sort of understand it. But, yeah, the whole volume, uh, quality versus quantity thing, yes. So I, I think that the Vikings – I mean, they can trade down if the spot is absolutely right. And we're talking about we, we need a lot. Like, like if the Steelers want to come up future, uh, well, 20, future first, future third, minimum. Minimum. Uh, but not, not so much with the seventh round picks. Uh, Thomason, uh, Quasey on the number 12 pick. We're always calling teams and getting their thoughts uh, when he's talking about trading uh, the pick or moving up or moving down. Again, uh, this is his job. This is what he has to do. Uh, uh, Quasey on his draft role with Cleveland last year. My job last year was to be on the phone communicating with different teams. So uh, it's also a good sign that, that Quasey has that experience working the phones, uh, talking to other GMs or assistant GMs and working out deals. Uh, you know, the Browns and Andrew Berry, uh, they have made some moves uh, in the past. So they've also had some great draft picks. So they they found phenomenal value uh, wherever they've been selecting. So uh, I, I like that Quasey basically had de facto GM experience last season. Uh, I think that's something uh, great that Andrew Berry uh, did for Quasey. Um, and uh, I think that uh, Quasey coming in to this job where he isn't coming completely cold. You know, it's time with John Lynch, even though John Lynch came in as a complete neophyte, uh, never worked in scouting, never even worked uh, with a team before he was GM of the Niners. Uh, yeah, we, if we don't talk about that, John Lynch came in from the booth. Uh, he was basically Matt Millen, except it worked out. So, but Quasey learned from John Lynch, learned from Andrew Barry, uh, getting his hands uh, dirty, uh, basically being a GM on the phones last year, as well as uh, doing some of these scouting trips. I, I love what Quasey is doing, and I think the Vikings are in good hands. Uh, that being said, uh, if they make a bad pick, fire everyone. <laughs> but we'll see. It's exciting, man. So, so, so close. Uh, but your thoughts on our thoughts. Quasey's pre-draft presser. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Must support the work. Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.